want to take a look at the abandoned Eagle Lake locomotives in northern Maine. Right now we're coming up to a checkpoint where we have to sign in and pay a toll that helps keep the roads clear and you sign in to make sure nobody gets lost. The best part of the road, it has the most color as far as the trees. Mostly yellow, a few bright reds. We made it to the road. I gotta say, they really improved the roads since I was up here in the spring. It took us about four hours since we left the pavement to get this far in the spring. But this time, we were actually able to travel the speed limit between 40 and 50 miles an hour. It only took two hours to get to this point. Everything was super smooth until we got to this road right here, going to the actual trains. This road is pretty bumpy. There's a few raised culverts. On the main road, they replaced every single failed culvert that I saw in the spring. October, a lot of really nice fall colors. Also, no traffic. Barely anyone comes up here this time of year. It's really early in the morning, only past a couple of logging trucks. Alright, we made it to the parking lot. Real early, it's about 6 a.m. We are here. Almost a mile. And then we have half a mile walk after the trains. Go check out the tram station. Absolutely all the mud from last time dried up. We finally made it to the railroad, all grown in. Big dirt donut. Right here's a siding that we'll go check out. There's a bunch of abandoned freight cars down there. Box cars, flatbeds. A few wooden hoppers, but the engines, the locomotives are on the main line. All the timber is still here. They're building something. I assume it's a boardwalk. This sign right here is basically telling you you get a big fine if you're caught stealing anything. Take a look at this lever to throw the switch. The tree grew right into it. It's now a straight shot to the locomotives on this grown-in track. All the ties are completely rotted away. Here's another switch. There's a big engine head. We'll go take a look at that two-cylinder engine. 
I know exactly where that is. We finally made it. Here we have another switch. Look at that, it fell over and the tree grew right through it. There's a locomotive sitting on each of these tracks. Perfect, the sun's just coming up. It's supposed to be a nice sunny day. And what we have right here is the tram system. This would pull logs across the land on that tiny little track it has these teeth that would just grab onto it to pull it the half a mile between the two bodies of water that's that's the engine it's a two-cylinder engine i assume maybe that came from a tractor giant gear right there the nice wood bumper on this one completely rotted away or maybe it was even burned away these locomotives here were originally parked in a big building that was burned down in the 1960s by accident after one of the forest rangers or somebody was ordered to burn it down so people wouldn't get hurt on it. The engines were in that fire, so most of the wooden parts, such as that bumper, burned or later were rotted away. Some wooden parts can still be found on it. Its first trip was 1927. And it ended in 1933. Look at that picture all grown in. That was back then. They didn't really trim it. Now they have a lot of people coming here. So the roads are very improved. Very rusty. Got to be very careful if you go up in these things. Very easy to get cut. nineteen oh seven look at that the bearings are still shiny and greasy all this weathering on the back actually looks kind of nice the fire really accelerated the rusting process The smaller engine over here used to have a cabin made of mostly wooden parts. That's why it's missing. Just burned. All right, let's go get a look inside. All right, we are up inside. Look at this, here's some of the burnt wood. People's names are carved all over it. Pretty cool, you can read some of the things. Here we are, the giant firebox. Look at that. 
big old firebox. All the gauges, all the valves have all been stripped off it. Really nice. Check this out, this is awesome. What about up here? Can we shut that hatch? Nope, that's rusted shut. All right. Up we go. Check this out. The big water tank. Climbing on up. Let's get a look in the water tank. It's nice to see it not full of garbage. I see it's really shiny. A lot of really small people go down there. And look at this. Raspberries on the roof. If we were here a month ago, we would have had a snack, but they've been eaten. Okay, look at this hatch. This goes into another tank. These were originally oil burners, so they have two tanks. Got roof drains after all these years, not even clogged up. I wonder what that tank is right there. I think that maybe was an air tank for the brakes possibly. Look at that. That's a 27, 1927 that was put in. All right, now this might be loud opening this up. All right, let's check out the inside. No reason to go down there. Although a lot of people do, look how shiny that ladder is. Nice. There's the roof drain pipes. Another smaller tank. Very rusty in here. You can tell water sometimes really gets in here. There's some holes rusted right through the bottom. Here's that hatch I tried to close. That is rusted shut. That's not going to close. Here's up top. Looks like they, use an acetylene torch, to just cut something out. And look at that. They covered up both of the exhaust pipes, the smokestacks, I guess so water wouldn't get in there, maybe so animals wouldn't go in there, or maybe so some idiot doesn't get themselves stuck in there. You know, that last one, that's what I bet it is. That is what I bet it is. Walking right on over. Here we go. Here's inside here. 
somebody ripped the door off that one. That's good, she's not crying anymore. She's exploring underneath. Now this water tank is still holding water. Check out in this one, iron oxidizing bacteria down there, starting to eat the entire thing. A lot of beer cans. got to be careful where you walk in these things. Here's this one's firebox. What do we got out here? All right, let's go check out the box cars and machinery. All right. Get a look underneath. Down there. This is where they must have dumped out all the ashes. They burned oil in it at the end of its life. Maybe it burned coal or wood at the beginning because these engines were used when they came up here. Some of the rivets are like rusted right through. It looks like water comes out of that crack when it rains out. I know the smaller engine has holes Going right through it. Got a ton of mosquito larva right there. Trying to use myself to measure the tracks. See if they're narrow gauge or not. You're going to see a ton of dilapidated train cars now. They were just simply parked here, hoping to be used again, but they have just completely incinerated, rotted, possibly even burned. Now you just see the stabilizing rods and brake lines holding them together. See this one still has the back wall. That was either a box car or an open top. There's one that's really intact we'll go look at. Last time we were here, the water was up to where I'm walking. That gear was sitting in the mud. Now this is the area you come in if you're coming up by boat or kayak. The beaver lodge, get a big gear in the water. This is where that 
trim system would have pulled the logs out of the water to the other side. Look this whole wetland is dried up. Pretty choppy today. Here's one of the tiny little rails for the tram system. I bet the beavers have abandoned their home. Look at the entrance of it is way out of the water. Where I'm standing is supposed to be underwater. Last time it was so muddy, people were using that as a little bridge to get across. Now right here is a giant winch. That's kind of how they pulled across the logs on the tracks. This right here is a mechanical donkey. Or logging donkey. The boiler is missing. Just incredible wreckage. Look at that. Just collapsing as the wood rots away. They're all still coupled together, ready to go. All their cars are marked 1907. To the back are the most preserved ones. This one still has a wall attached to it. It's not worth it to take the scrap out. So they left everything here and now it's a landmark. It's now illegal to take it out of here. Last time I was out here, people were saying those engines should be preserved. I kind of agree with that. Maybe have a roof built over them or have them painted, but that also takes away from it being abandoned. At least this way you can see how nature slowly takes it back. And here we are, the end of the line, the most preserved car. Look at that, the trees growing right around it. All the main beams are just rotted here in these lumps of dirt. Now this, I don't see any other timbers, like the wall here is like non-existent. Somebody was saying they didn't think it had a roof. It was an open car. But I do see attachments like there would have been some kind of cross beam. I think it had a roof. This is the end of the line, the big rock pile stopper. Is that their old paint or maybe even preservative after all these years? Basically all the wheel bearings are still super greased up. Look at that. Check it out, this one can be read absolutely perfectly. 1911 Canadian Pacific VY Montreal. This area right here is usually flowing with water. Yeah, because there's no culvert pipe there, it's probably plugged up. That's why 
usually get a big mosquito pool there on a normal year. I guess it's time for us to go check out the tram station and then we'll look at some rusted machinery on the way back to the parking lot. All right, here we go. Half a mile hike to the tram station. Here, got the little track and the trees grew right through it. That's the most noticeable part. Going further, it's just buried. Beautiful trail. Looks like it's been weed whacked. Very dilapidated part of the track. Half of it's upside down. On a normal year would be nice. You see, you'd have all the trickling water. And if it was trimmed, there's a little stone border on each side of the trail. See all these big scrapes here, just like from before. Now these are definitely from snowmobiles. That's why they're so deep. A snowmobile was going here when the snow wasn't very deep. And that's probably what did it also to the tracks. We made it to the tram station. Got a little bridge because this is the drainage ditch. And this here is a raised example that they built so you can see how it worked. Those teeth just grip onto the log and pull it across. Here's a picture of right here. And this is the locomotive house that burned down around the engines. I'll take a look at how tall that smokestack is for venting. Those two little, see those cabins for the workers? Those aren't, you can't even find a foundation of those anymore. They were probably just up on bricks. Let's get a quick look over at that. If anyone wants to read that, just pause it. See that? It was pulled by a 6,000 foot cable loop. And it pulled at about 3,000 feet, it said. I see one cable going across, but I don't see how it looped. Because there's only one track. Got a giant double boiler here. Take a look at this. Start some fires in there. And that smokestack, the bottom of it, see how it's open so we can let even more air up inside. Get the smoke nice and high. And it looks like the steam would have traveled up these pipes. And there's two valves to control how much comes from each one. Goes up, over. And we turn these giant pulleys over there to the gear. There's a gear box all opened up. And over. Got some old pictures. Inside is just broken. Maybe they threw them out because maybe these parts were all hidden beneath the dirt. Maybe they excavated them just so tourists could see them. That's what I hope it is. Take a look at this big belt. It's like a trampolina. It looks perfectly smooth. It's amazing it stays on that. Looking at it from here, it doesn't even have a dip in it. Some people were saying it stayed on there in that way. But you see how the middle is a different color? It must be slightly higher in the center. Got some spider webs in there. Let's check out the back of this. East Boston, Massachusetts, 1901.
So this thing is real old. That thing sounds like a door. That would be in a horror movie. Last time we were here, this pit was full of water. Oh, wow. The entire Chamberlain Lake is dried up because there hasn't been rain in such a long time. So you can see here, the boiler makes the steam and this is how the power gets over. Look at these things, just to grab the logs. Because normally, there would be water here. Yeah, last time I was here, I could not walk where I was now. I had to walk on a trail over there. And then I walked out on this. I remember I was balancing on this, not wanting to fall in the water. And look how low it is now. Look at the trail. The lake is way down there. Look how far that dried up. It's a bad drought. The worst drought here in 30 years. You won't find mud anywhere. Most of these prints here are probably from moose. I bet the deer like it. It's a big open grass land now. Pretty cool. Considering the other one, it's pretty high. You could walk literally half a mile and only be up to your waist in the water. Check this area out. Leaving these giant cracks as it dried up. I see tons of moose tracks out here. You know, this is actually really bad for the moose. Yep, see them big moose tracks. Things like deer probably like it, as far as having a giant grazing field. But the moose don't, because usually this is where they'd get their food. Moose like shallow water, where they can simply reach down and grab all the plants to eat. This is all that's left of the mud. Not gonna walk all the way down there. It's probably a mile away when I'm looking at. Look at this. Burning stumps. Yeah, all those parts you see lying around must have been done by rangers because you see they're burning stumps out of the way. You see how they pushed it? And they must have found all those parts in the ground that they laid out for people to look at. That must be what all these parts are. Very recently done.
giant pistons. <laughs> oh, here's the drainage ditch. There's the tram system. Trying to use myself to measure the tracks. See if they're narrow gauge or not. I'm just over six feet, so. Looks like there's almost five feet of space between them. Somebody drop food in the crack. This is the other line further down. Got two sidings here. They're about to join together into one, then eventually hooking up at the main line. Some of these cars still have their cross sections. Nineteen twenty-eight, big old pulley. Right there, you got the brake. It does appear these cars were all set on fire with the trains. Look at that. That's all burnt char. Got another switch. Kind of taken apart. That is just a beautiful shot. The moss growing on everything. Right here, there's a bunch of these giant reels for the cable. Bunch of gears. More pulleys. That looks like another logging donkey, completely disassembled. Now this thing here looks like some kind of scoop. There's another pulley. This scoop, I mean, looks like somehow with pulleys they would put this over like a big pile of gravel or coal. And that would come together squeezing it. Yeah, just look at the teeth on that. That's some kind of old excavator. Like it would be hanging from a crane. It would come down, close, grabbing everything. They could have used that for all kinds of things. Moving soil, digging out the drainage ditches, putting ties in. The purposes of that could be endless. Here's something else. I know they had a really small engine somewhere. This might be pieces of it. The tree growing right up through it. Here's another part. Look at that. I don't know if this was part of it. Because it has legs like it was something stationary. Now it's nothing more than just a big flower pot. Look at everything growing out of it. That's all raspberries. Like a month too late to eat them. Bunch of cable and stuff. Yeah, they definitely pulled all kinds of remnants out for people to see. That was most likely buried. Look at that. There's still a bunch of coal all over the ground. Look in the firebox. box. 
this trail goes to the track where we just were. You see this raised area? There's a siding in there, completely overgrown. And it looks like that's about it. On this track, about a quarter mile ahead is when you switch off where that big dirt donut is. If you continue walking on the grown-in tracks, like another half a mile further up, there's a line of another dozen abandoned cars. But you're not going to see anything more than what was already here. It's the same type of cars. And beyond that, another few hundred feet, you come to another siding with like four cars, if I remember. All right, everyone, gonna end the video here. Hope this video was interesting. This time, it was very easy to get up here. Last time I was gonna say, I ran over so many culvert pipes that were installed incorrectly, like they collapsed, making the big dip in the road you couldn't see, and you slam into that so hard. But this time, they replaced every single collapsed culvert the road was super smooth. They got rid of most of the potholes. There are still a few treacherous spots. You got to slow way down to a crawl. But my average speed was like 40 miles an hour. Pretty good travel time getting up here. Made it in half the time. It's because it hasn't rained. You saw how low that lake was. Rain is what ruins dirt roads. It puts potholes in it. But it hasn't rained significantly in probably five or six months. So they had plenty of time to use the grater to get rid of all the potholes. They actually caught up with it. Very nice road. As soon as it rains, it'll be wrecked. Back to a pothole. I don't know how they did it, but somehow somebody got a Prius up here. I saw it driving around. I would have loved to get a video of that going over the treacherous pothole area. I always bring 10 gallons of extra gas in cans because coming up here, I used almost half a tank. I do have enough gas to get back without any issue, but I want to explore deeper into the forest, so I always bring extra gas. The closest gas station here is probably almost 100 miles away in Greenville, Maine. From the trains here, it's 40 miles back to the checkpoint, and from the checkpoint back to the paved road, I would say, is probably 50 or 60 miles back to what they call Katahdin. That's when you get back to the asphalt. And we are out of here. train and trams are down this way that's a dead-end road and just by looking at it you see how where I am now and the road coming to it both go down there there's barely any tire tracks going straight through here that means those trains have a lot of people going to it during tourist season it must be packed you could tell it gets used a lot